Hey everyone, this is my next commentary for Monday Night Combat. And I'm going to talk about the Valentine's Day patch we just had on the 9th. As you see, I am decked out in the stylish Valentine's Day Heartbreaker uniform for Wascot. It's a uh, it's a pirate themed love outfit that every character every pro got in the game. And I think it's a uh, I think Wascot needs some more uniforms. And the zombie I think zombies are kind of played out. That's the thing everyone has, but that was Wascott's only uniform, was a zombie one, and I'm just, I'm getting kind of tired of zombies. Now, I, admittedly, pirates aren't uh, all that better, but it's at least a little creative in that it actually mixes it up with the Valentine's theme. So, um, a lot of changes that went on with this patch, or some, or three big primary changes that went on with the, uh, Excuse me. The big changes that went on with this patch were the uh, the balance changes with Cheston, the assassin, and the support. Um, I won't comment too much on Cheston's uh, changes because I do not play enforcers that often. I am not familiar with Cheston at all. I don't. I've never played him at all once. So, yeah, I know. Why would I do that? He's a giant monkey. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Just did not appeal to me as a character. Not that he's bad. It's just nothing interested me at all. Anyway, uh, his HP got nerfed. The dev said that was because of his mobility, more than made up for the lower HP he would have, so uh, I hear people that disagree. Some say they they understand that, but that the health nerf was too much. So, as for me, I don't know. Um, I've never had a problem with Cheston. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm not really sure. So the uh, next one I can speak more on is the assassin. Uh, her grapples uh, got uh, their damage reduced, so that her grapples are no longer as strong as the other, uh, are stronger than most other players' uh, grapples. Um, for this one, I understand um, the assassin has been a really strong uh, commando for a while now. She had very, very powerful uh, grapples. I think she could. At high level, she could take out with a back grapple. She could take out a good chunk of your health bar, if half, if not more, depending on the uh, level difference. So I understand that one. There's also the fact that she, uh, thanks to her cloak, she can be ignored by bots and other uh, turrets and all that. So she has a lot lower risk of uh, being attacked against when she's trying to kill someone, and combine it with her, the strength of her uh, grapple, it's a, it's a little much. So that makes sense. The other change for her was the cloak itself, which now um, it decreases. You lose a bit of cloak every time you attack, which again I understand. She can easily go in the back. She can sit there and attack bots. She can attack turrets while cloaked up being fired upon. So that kind of it doesn't totally eliminate her ability to do that. It just uh, weakens it a little bit. So I think it's pretty fair overall. Like I said, I don't have the best handling on balance right now, so I'll try to not make too bold of statements on it. For now, and then there's the third change to support, which was the mostly do with the firebase. His firebase now does not start off at full HP when it's deployed. It takes longer to deploy, but he can heal it while deploying. And this one I really agree against. There is a particularly on this map right here, Locomoco. There is a habit for supports to just use the jump pad up to the annihilator, drop a firebase, and run away. And you either are forced to deal with the firebase or deal with whoever else is up there. I feel like it's not, it goes against what the support, defender class is all about. It's supposed to be uh, sort of an area denial, not really an offensive tool. And if he wants to do that, he has to st stick with it, risk getting attacked himself, and actually heal up the uh, firebase. And also, firebases are a lot, they're not like combat. Uh, the combat cats that the combat girl has, they actually... Uh, they actually, they have a lot more HP. They can heal their players, and they also persist through the uh, support's death. If he dies, they stay around. So this game right here is a uh, just me and my my group of five. Just uh, we were playing all day on Saturday, and unfortunately, I did not get a whole lot of good games. So I went ahead and went for the 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 worst game from the from the opponent's perspective. Uh, I had a ridiculous score at the end of this. 
it seems like there's a lot of new players that got invited on Saturday, or just new players that are playing that got invited on Friday and started playing on Saturday. Not sure when they got invited, but there was a a huge increase in number of players. I think they had like 10,000 more players to the game. So I think that kind of diluted the uh, kind of diluted the player base a bit. So I did not see a whole lot of the uh, better teams we normally fight against. Because usually we see a lot of we see a, a lot of good teams. I mean, some nights we'll we'll go up against some really good teams. We'll uh, lose about 15, 10 minutes, and well, then we'll you know every so often we'll fight some teams that are decent or they're bad, and we'll beat them. It's, it's kind of for the most part kind of 50-50. This night though, I I don't think we ever lost a game. We 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 didn't lose a game, and the games we won, we pretty much won handily. And I, I feel bad, because I know that a, a huge problem with the game right now is like a matchmaking, so you get these new players, and a lot of people are saying, you get these new players that come in, they get into games like this, where they just uh, don't really stand a chance at all, and uh, it's, it's, it's very discouraging. You don't know how to get better, because you're just getting really, really stomped. And... It, the matchmaking is coming. They've said it's coming in a few patches here, and I'm hoping. And they're, I know Uber's not going to invite a ton of players at once while there's no matchmaking. They're not stupid. So for the time being, they're just going to have to. I don't know. I recommend not doing. Uh, I recommend if you're new to the game, I recommend not doing a pre-made for the time being, just solo queue. You'll probably have slightly better odds of a fair game. Uh, there's no guarantees there, but we'll be somewhat better. Look at that, I mean, that eject I missed right there. And, um, I see here, just, um, already getting the fir first tower down. So, other changes for the patch were the change of Spunky Cole Arena, which I like. It's a glass pane above the the second to last pair of turrets, or second to last turret before your uh, money ball, which is basically where your bot, where you spawn your bots at, and it prevents players from jumping down there and sort of picking off people from behind. And the thing is, there's a there was a jump pad there, so a player can easily go down, kill someone, and then jump pad, uh, use a jump pad to get back up. And it made it really easy for people, for um, particularly a, a hardier class like a, like a, a striker or a or a uh, enforcer, to go down there, kill someone, and pop back up before they die. Particularly if you have, you know, you're overhealed and all that. So that's a nice change. I'm, I'm Spunky Arena is growing on me the more I play it. It's an interesting map because it's so it forces you to split really hard. But the more I play it, the more I like it. There is some still some, uh, I guess, a couple issues with it. It's a. Uh, well, I got, I got to learn how to hook around on that map because I'm really bad at it. That's probably some issue with the map, more of an issue with myself. So. I'll deploy the map some more, see what I think about it. But right now, I, I used to hate it, and now the more I play it, the more I like it over the other maps. Uh, for the most part, I like the maps. The probably one exception is um, a Bullet Gorge. I get this. Look at that. Yeah, I've been trying to build where I level the Crook Hook some more to get off topic here, because I'm starting to really get better at hitting people and getting that stun off. Back on topic, though the uh, I'm not gonna name it. It's called Bullet Gorge, I think, but it has it's the one with two bridges, and it's uh, really easy early on to get ring outs. And I, th I don't hate the map, but it's probably my least favorite because one, you have to watch out for things like veteran clawing you and all that. And the second thing is that people try to focus too much on getting ring outs more than anything else. People focus more on getting ring outs than actually killing bots, and they'll end up being over uh, end up being under leveled because. They may get a few kills here and there. They didn't really kill bots like they should have. In the end, it just doesn't make up for the lack, the experiences it made up for it. So it's just a kind of a, a player behavior thing. I think a problem in the game is that you, in the early phase, players try to focus on getting kills very often, and it doesn't, it doesn't work out the way it should. There's another nice stun right there. Still not the best at aiming crook hook, but I'm trying to learn how to. But early on in the game, don't try to focus on killing players so much as trying to kill bots, get experience, level up, and get that money for the first Annihilator. And above all, else, avoid dying. The problem is by going for focusing on getting kills early on, you're also focusing on 
overextending to an extent. Because unless a player's overextending and you kill them, in order to get a kill, you're going to have to overextend yourself. And here's a good example of the patch change. See here, I was able to easily kill that firebase, no problem. And handle that guy easily. Granted, now we have a massive level of uh, advantage over them, so even even without the patch change, I would still would have killed them. But so yeah, I'm I'm um gosh, I'm trying to think about back to Crook Hook for a second here. It does stun for a second when you uh, that was a, region, a recent patch change about two yeah two patches ago they added back the uh, stun to it. As you see right here, it stuns the bots. So it's got a it's got a variety of uses now. So I've been uh, putting points more points in it than anything else. Pretty much balancing between it and Shifty Shuffle. I originally tried doing um, a build where I focused on Party Pooper and Shifty Shuffle, but I found I don't use Party Pooper enough. I do use it, but just it's it's very short duration, so it's not super useful. And here it's a pretty good uh. Pretty good summoning for a uh, bouncer on her part, but I was able to juice and kill her off. But yeah, it, don't don't neglect to use party pooper. You're playing last guy. It's a good it's a good debuff. I just don't see it um, being worth the points now that I can stun people with the uh, the hook. And the hook's also mobility, so it's nice to have that lower cooldown on it. And the other thing about the Valentine's Day patch change was the uh, Valentine's Day taunts they also added. I do not have that. Um, I find it to be a bit expensive, and I it's a holiday taunt. It's not, I don't think they're restricted based on the holiday, but once again, good example of the stun. You're able to go back, kill him, and quickly get out of there. And it's not that they have a restriction on uh, the holiday outfits and taunts. It's just that I feel that the... The Valentine's uniform, it, it kind of fits even when you're not playing during Valentine's because you get the pirate theme going on. Whereas Valentine's one's more specific specific for that holiday. And I don't know. I guess I'm just anal. Why am I so damn strong? Um, I was going to say something there, but I didn't feel like being mean. Um, yeah, at this point, the reason why I'm killing you, Swerve, is because your team is sort of... They're, over like here, they're overextending. They're not learning what I can, what I'm capable of doing. Other thing you notice right there is that I, the reason I can overextend slightly is because I have the Inspire product, which heals me when I kill someone. So if I know I can get the solo kill, I will go for it because I can heal up and get out of there before the turret really damages me. But yeah, their team. You see here, their team. He's behind enemy lines. He's surrounded by bots. He's gonna die. I get an assist because my kill was stolen. Oh no, he killed himself. He dropped his bomb. That was another patch change, actually. Link it to that. The um, he probably didn't do that intentionally. He probably killed himself by accident. But back in the back before this patch, you could kill yourself and deny a player uh, the kill. By doing so, they fix that. If you suicide within a certain time period, you will not get a uh, you won't get credit for the kill. Another good example of the Inspire product right there. I. Was getting low, but I heal myself back at the half. So it's a it's a one of my favorite products right now. If you are a different player, like if you're not commando, commando, you're gonna be alone in many situations where you have to either kill someone and get out before the other players come and attack you, and you will have that extra heal to yourself some sort of leeway to get out. But if you're a player like a striker or a tank, once again, there is the stun. But if you're a striker or an enforcer tank like character, you might find generous kill a bit better because that will also heal um, friendly players around you. So that's probably a better idea. It heals less on a per basis, but also heals everybody around you. So consider that if you're a going to be around more players more often. I'm right here getting out of the way. If you, uh, yeah, and save him in time, but got the kill. But as I said earlier, if, um, not earlier, where was I? Ah, support bombs. If you're getting hit by, if you see the little graphic for the support's bomb, over here you want to see the little overhangs there. Uh, if the bomb is 
if you're getting bombed on a ceiling and you're underneath the ceiling, it'll hit the top surface area instead of you, so keep that in mind. You'll see in this video, if you go back, you'll see areas uh, where I did that. Like right here is a good spot for it. You'll be safe from the bomb. And keep in mind that too if you're a support, because they will use that to avoid you. Um, I don't know what she was doing. And once again, it's done. Very easy. At this point, she should just got out of she she uh, bleh. she should have just got out of dodge. Uh, done a smoke bomb out of the way. Uh, once again, that support change really uh really hurt you. And um, here I'm going to use a defensive juice. I don't like using juice defensively, but in that case, better safe than sorry. If you look right here, there's a little target icon next to the guy's name. That shows a nemesis where I've killed him constantly without dying. If you've played Team Fortress 2, it's similar to a similar to a domination. And if you are getting dominated, you'll see a little broken heart next to their name. But the important thing to remember is that if you are if you do have that nemesis icon on players' names, do not get killed by them because they do get a nemesis kill bonus for doing so. So it's important to not to let yourself die because that does provide a comeback opportunity for the other team. Let's go ahead and summon some bots, heal up. I got a lot of cash now, so I gotta spend it. Make sure you're spending your cash too. After the first annihilator, you really don't need to save money up that much. Um, unless you're spending on really uh, dumb things, you should always have enough money for the next annihilators. Just watch your cash. I guess the best way to do it is to uh, save up a thousand when you're getting close to the annihilator. Just watch your scoreboard time, make sure you're keeping track of that. And right here, we're pretty much finishing this game up. Get some churros. And make sure you're killing bots, too, at the same time. Uh, if the turrets are still up, just go ahead and focus on killing the bot waves. Let your bots get up there, because if the bots are being attacked by enemy bots, they might turn around and target those bots to the tower, so you kind of want to... You really just want to make sure your bots are focused on those towers, so... Kill enemy bots, let the enemy hide behind their, their turrets. Don't get greedy. That was a miss. I almost, almost killed myself there, so... Like I said, aim's not perfect. And there she went. There we go. That was a good uh, jump for her. She got away from me. Yeah, but she almost went back kill with not getting time. Yeah, at this point, their turret's down, or their turrets are down, their money ball's down. Uh, I'm at 15. I'm gonna go ahead and just... Uh, I think they're pretty much done. They're not even... No. I'm almost trying, I'm trying to make a comeback. And I'm going to taunt. Like I said, I prefer the dance taunt over the Valentine's one, so I bought that. That's the game. 31 kills, zero deaths. Um, try to say anything about that. Like I said, new players are going to have problems knowing how to play. Um, it happens. Hopefully with team, when uh, the matchmaking comes out, that will not happen anymore. And that is a replay. Um, if you have not um, signed up yet for the beta, you can do so. I believe on Valentine's Day they're going to invite everyone who signs up. So sign up before, I think Valentine's is Tuesday or Monday. I forget when, but sign up by then and get into the beta and enjoy the game. And I'll see you next time.